you're thinking about renting the RV this summer to take a long road trip. You're working overtime and you just want to get away. But gas prices are ridiculous. Have you seen them? Driving up airline tickets as well. So has gas become so hopelessly politicized that all we could do is sit at home and wait for them to come down? Chris Horner is author of Power Grab, How Obama's Green Policies Will Steal Your Freedom and Bankrupt America. He says gas prices are intentionally being driven up by Obama and company. Democratic strategist Nancy Skinner disagrees. She says speculators are to blame for high gas prices. Great to see you both. Nancy, first to you. Wouldn't gasoline be cheaper if the EPA were missing a few teeth, if they pulled back a little bit from their regs? No, it has nothing to do with that. The nothing? price of gas has to do with the price of the world spot market for gas. And so we've had all this disruption in the Middle East. When George Bush was president, gas was $4 a gallon. And remember, he was going to uh, get the, his dear friends to open the spigot. He couldn't. We are being held, we are held hostage by our lack of it and their, their supply of it. So it has nothing to do with the EPA once... And so, and they will eventually go down. Chris, I, I am looking down. right now at the U.S. Energy Information Administration report on refinery capacity, and it says clearly that these refineries in the United States are underutilized by about 30 percent. It also says that these consent degree settlements with the EPA could cost each refinery, about 150 of them, $50 million each. So isn't the EPA preventing these refineries from producing gas at full blast? Well, they're certainly making it more expensive. High crude prices do depress demand somewhat. They also make it more expensive uh, for the refiners. But the EPA regs, the inconsistent fuel requirements, these 18 flavors of moonshine that EPA requires, but all, would, requiring shutting down, idling, flushing of systems. But also, for example, under the Clean Air Act, some parties, including refineries, have found the only way to comply with the requirements is to operate at a lower level of capacity. So it's quite clear that it is EPA's interpretation of the Clean Air Act that's leading to uh, the refineries Chris, operating at a lower capacity. Republican, by the way, David. Yeah, hold on a second. Even the former Republican governor of California, Arnold Schwarzenegger, is saying that we need the Clean Air Act. He says it in the Wall Street Journal today. Otherwise, we're going to go back to the old smog alerts of yesteryear. Now, actually, air pollution in the United States in the Northeast and the Midwest, where it was populated, peaked in the 1920s. Air pollution was declining in the United States for decades before the Clean Air Act, before no. EPA. It this will continue to true. do so. Yeah, you can't deny. Okay, you're on record saying that, Nancy. How embarrassing. And so you can't deny facts. And so EPA, yes, is for the reasons I just stated, which are the reasons what the people in the industry will tell you increase prices. But look, gas is refined in America. Ninety-something percent of the gas we use right. is refined here. So it's not a global spot price for gasoline that drives U.S. gas prices. Okay. Gas price spot market here is driven by uncertainty, which is driven by this administration. But Nancy, go ahead and talk about the Clean Air Act because you do have Schwarzenegger so, coming so out in favor President of it today. Nixon, what do you think? I, I I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to get this uh, in. So President Nixon, who passed the Clean Air Act, did it for, for, for no good reason at all because the air was fine. We didn't have dioxins and acid rain and all the issues that we had. So it, that's what your guests would have us believe. But look, when you, to your larger point about uh, Obama's green policies hurting us, it couldn't be more uh, different. Now, there are some companies, and I've always said this, I'm a finance major who believes in this, that, that will find profit in doing the right thing. Uh, AT&T just announced a nationwide program where they're taking in old cell phones and all electronic equipment through a company called FlipSwap, and they will You're changing pay the subject, it, Nancy. Let's get gonna... back to what you just said. Companies the, the, won't no, make no, money no, doing they, the right they, thing. They, That's right. Air pollution was being... When they can, and then they will go to the developing world. But, but, here's the but. Finish up quickly, Nancy, and then back to Chris. changing the subject. So companies will do that when they can, but by and large, it takes some sort of incentive, some sort of government program that says, here's what the goal <laughs> is. We need to be 50% more efficient. We right need uh, compact fluorescent light okay, bulbs. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Guys, hold on. Yeah, because what I you. see happen is that government incentivizes uh, companies to do things even if they are not profitable. And look at ethanol as a prime example of that, Chris. Well, yeah, it's another of a series of phony markets created by politicians to which companies like GE will respond and then say, look, we made money and jobs are created, ignoring the economic harm and the jobs that are killed in the process. Quick history lesson. Okay, the Clean Air Act was passed not by a president but by a Congress. It was passed in response to public demand because the public demanded. In Ohio, they stopped the Cuyahoga from catching on fire ten times in a century right. because they you couldn't said recruit the air people was there. Fine. It's people. Nancy, stop interrupting. You said it was great. Nancy, now let Chris finish. Go ahead, I'm sorry Chris. you have 
it must be all this clean air that's hurting your hearing. Air pollution has continued dropping for decades before the Clean Air Act and will continue to drop. It didn't drop because of the Clean Air Act, though many provisions of it did help. But stop saying that wealthy countries clean up because of and only because of laws. And then out of the other side of your mouth, say companies will make money doing the right thing. Wealthy societies with healthy economies place a higher economic value on environmental protection. That's what we see here. That's what we'll continue to see here. And Obama harming the economy with this statism and ideologically using the environment as a way to fundamentally transform America does not help the environment. And Nancy, it's the first thing to go when people you, get hurt economically. Where you have government subsidizing economic activity doesn't work. We've seen it not work with ethanol, right? We've seen it not it's, work it's in other countries. It depends on what like the, the activity Union, is, for David. example. Go ahead. It, 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 it depends on what that activity is. For instance, oil subsidies completely should stop. When you have this price, this gas price, you don't have to encourage oil companies to drill. But what we do have, because we are great at innovating, geothermal, solar, uh, photovoltaics, electrifying our entire fuel cells for, and electrifying our, our auto fleet across the country, that's where you do need, you got economies of scale. So as we have more of those products put out, the price goes down and the government no, can help do that. The price hasn't so gone down Yes, None of those Chris. industries would be here but for subsidies. None of those industries, unlike oil, coal, and natural gas, would be here tomorrow if the subsidies ended for them. What'd you pay for your geothermal plant, Nancy? What'd you pay for your windmill? I know the answer. Look, none of these would exist but for politicians I actually have satisfying their vanity to I have wave a around their hey, look, in I my did building. something. <laughs> and they said, look, I did something. What will the right. temperature be after you use it? This is not about the environment. By the, the way, issue's Nancy, not the issue. you know, so how, many, really is you know how many on Nissan Leafs were sold in the United States in the month of January and February? No, I don't. I 87, don't know how many Chevy Cruises no. 87 cars and in Chevy all of the United States in and February Chevy and 67 and four in January. Fusions in because they're Nissans at Japan. And they had an earth they and they had a hurricane. We have sold lots of American cars. By the US American government cars. and the American people don't want them. But we've got to leave it at that, David, gang. Thank you for the debate. Despite robbing the middle class. I appreciate having you both on.